Hello everybody, welcome to another video of Crossover. Today we are going to be covering the topic of Sabbath. And the Sabbath is the holy day. The day that God rested after creating the earth. The seventh day of the week. And we're just going to talk about it. We're going to tell you what you shouldn't do, what you should do. And, with that all being said, I guess we will begin. The definition of Sabbath is a weekly day of rest or time of worship given in the Bible as the seventh day. So, the Bible talks about the Sabbath, and in Genesis, it states that, you know, the first six days, Jesus was creating the earth, you know, the water, the sea creatures, the land animals, the sun, the stars, the moon, lights, darkness, everything. He was creating all this stuff. And on the seventh day, he rested. He sit, sat back, probably, you know, sat on a little cloud lounge chair and was like, This is good. It states here in the Bible, Jeremiah 17, verse 21. This is what the Lord says. Listen to my warning. Stop carrying on your trade at Jerusalem's gates on the Sabbath day. Verse 22. Do not do your work on the Sabbath, but make it a holy day. I gave this command to your ancestors, but they did not listen or obey. They stubbornly refused to pay attention to or accept my discipline. So, as you can see, people in Jerusalem were on the Sabbath day still trading, still doing work as God's as God clearly stated. Don't do anything. Don't work. And it stated that you, your family, your animals, nothing at all can do any work. Nothing. In the Bible, it does state a few exceptions, though, and this is one of them. Matthew 12, 11 through 12. And he answered, If you had a sheep that fell into a well on the Sabbath, wouldn't you work to pull it out? Of course you would. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, the law permits a person to do good on the Sabbath. That shows that... If you need to do something, if you need to help someone, then you have to do it. So people were over there, the, the Pharisees, they are over there criticizing Jesus, saying is that, oh, he was working, you know, because he's healing, and that does seem pretty stupid, you know, like, you'd think just because it's Sabbath, you know, why does it mean is that someone has to stop healing? Why does it mean that someone has to stop talking to God? Just because you are on the Sabbath and you need to not work and you really think is that people are not going to have needs? You think is that people are not going to need healing? People are going to need healing all the time. People are going to need a bunch of stuff all the time. Food, money, clothes, just health in general. People are going to need this. And just because it's Sabbath, the Pharisees are refusing to help people. Which is pretty messed up. In the Bible, it states that Jesus' disciples one day on the Sabbath went to go and break heads of grain to feed themselves. You know, because they were hungry. And Pharisees came over and we're like what are you guys doing over there you guys are working on the sabbath breaking heads of grain you know and jesus replies with this story jesus said to them haven't you ever read in scriptures what david did when he and his companions were hungry he went into the house of god during the days when abiathar Abiathar, I don't know how to pronounce that, excuse me, was high priest. 
and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some of his he also gave some to his companions. And that was Mark chapter 2 verse 25 through 26. So he was giving this example to show is that the his disciples the companions were hungry. And just because they're hungry and just because it was Sabbath meant is that they couldn't eat. That almost seems pretty dumb. You know, if you're hungry and you need food, you're going to starve. And the only way that you could get food is if you were to harvest the grain that you have. But you couldn't because it was Sabbath. That doesn't really make any sense. You know? It's Sabbath. Yes. You're not supposed to do work. Yes. But. God understands. Is that humans get hungry. He knows humans. He knows how humans feel. He, know how he, he knows how humans act. Excuse me. And he knows that people get hungry. Just as people get hungry for the word of God, people get hungry for food. And what the Pharisees were saying is, since it's the Sabbath, you cannot break grains off of wheat to feed yourself. Which is, as I've been saying, pretty stupid, because if you're starving, you would do everything you can to get something. To eat even if it is Sabbath it goes on to say in verse 27 then Jesus said to them the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath so the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath this is just Jesus basically reiterating himself saying is that the Sabbath even though it is the Sabbath you are still needing to meet the requirements of people. The Sabbath is made to help people, not just to not work and not do anything. The Sabbath is made to meet the requirements of people. If someone is hungry, you get them food. You need to meet the requirements of people. If someone needs healing, you pray over them. Just because it is the Sabbath doesn't mean that you can't talk to God. You're supposed to talk to God all the time. Because God wants a relationship with you. With that all being said, we are going to finish this off with the verse of this week. The verse of this week is from Genesis chapter 2 verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation so you know how god made the world in six days and rested on the seventh day i just him resting just made that specific day a holy day and he just rested he didn't do anything on that day now if any of that touched you in any way and you would like to give your life to God now God wants a relationship with you he wants to help you he wants to restore you pick up those broken pieces in your life now, if you want to accept God into your life then I want you to say this prayer with us dear Lord I pray that you come into my heart I pray that you watch over me all my days. I pray that you take over my life. My life is no longer mine, dear Lord. I give my life to you. Dear Lord, pick up the pieces in my life. Put me back together. I am not able to do this on my own. Dear Lord, I need you to help me and I need you to guide me. 
Dear Lord, I believe that your Son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for my sins, and I pray that you give me your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. And like, subscribe, do all that to stay up to date with everything that we're doing. And we hope you have a wonderful, blessed night or day, whichever one. And we thank you so much for watching this video. We can't thank you enough. It means a lot to us. And yeah, goodbye. See you guys next week.